Hey everybody, Neil Malik with Knack Training here, bringing another everyday office video. And in today's video, I want to show you a little animation that uh, I saw somebody else's PowerPoint slide deck. I thought to myself, oh, you know what? I bet I could do something like that with a really slick animation, and I wanted to see if I could recreate it. Let me go ahead and show you the effect right now. So as you can see here, we're trying to illustrate that something is 57% of a total. And so if I push forward right now, you see that nice, it's glowing, it um, appears to be, you know, uh, coming out of nowhere, basically. It appears to be looking out from behind a circle with this nice foggy glow around it, and it comes in in this beautiful little semi-circle pattern. Let me show you that effect one more time, and then we'll go ahead and show how to do it. So forward, there it is. You see how it grows, the glow goes with it, etc. So how do I make something like this happen? Let's start off with a new black slide. So I'll just come up here and uh, make a new slide. And let's change the background to black. Now we could also do this with a, any other color combination we want, but let's stick with what we've got right now. And the easiest way I know to create something that is really 57% is to actually create like a pie chart or a donut chart, something along those lines, and make sure it uses real numbers. So I'll go up here to insert at the top of my screen, make myself a chart, and uh, I'll do a pie chart. And then specifically, I'll use a donut chart so that I can clearly see where the ring actually is. Okay, so I've got my ring donut chart. I click OK. And let's say that this value is going to now be, uh, let's say it's 64%. So 64 is the first number. The second number will be 36, 64, 36. And then these other two values, I'll just delete them out of there. Okay, so I can close this down. I can get rid of the title. I can get rid of uh, these things down here at the bottom. And what I want now is to be able to treat this as, a, as an independent graphic. Now, in order to really work with the graphical elements in this chart, I'm going to need them to be actual graphics and not a complete chart at this point. So I'll click on the chart, use Control X to cut that chart out, and on the Home tab on the Paste drop-down menu, I'm going to choose the option for Paste Special. After I choose Paste Special, I can choose this option in the middle, which is Enhanced Metafile. And by doing this, if you've seen any of my chart animation videos in the past, you know I'm a big fan of doing this so that we can more incrementally change the different components of a chart, animate them, you know, any of those sorts of things. So here I'm using the enhanced metafile file type for pictures. Click OK. And what this allows me to do, let me go ahead and close my design ideas down and, and maybe I'll grow this a little bit. OK. And let's just make sure it's nice and squarely in the middle of the slide. Perfect. So now what I can do is I can ungroup this graphic. If I go up here to the Format tab at the top of the screen, I can use the Group drop-down menu and choose Ungroup, or I can use the keyboard shortcut Control-Shift-G to ungroup. It'll ask me whether I'm sure I want to ungroup. I click Yes. And now if I go to the Home tab at the top of the screen, to the Arrange drop-down menu, and I choose Selection Pane, I can see that I have many different graphics that I can choose from. For instance, over here, if I turn off the eyeball on Freeform 5, I see that that is the fill of the right-hand side of the chart. This one is the outer ring, so I can click on Freeform 6 here and delete it. I don't really need that. Freeform 7, that is the fill on the left-hand side. I need that. And Freeform 8 is the outline on the left-hand side. And I'll go ahead and delete that. And I also don't need Auto Shape, Auto Shape 3. That's basically the container that came along with this. So I'll click on that and I'll delete it. So now I have a group that has the fill on the right and the fill on the left. We're doing pretty well there. 
I also, though, want to make sure that the left-hand part of the ring is not on top of the right-hand part of the ring. So I'm going to grab Freeform 7 and drag it under Freeform 5. And that's because here in a second, let's click on Freeform 7, which is the left side of the ring, and let's change this to black. I'll go to Formatting, I'll tell it to fill with black, and there it is. It sort of disappears on me. But I don't want that to cover up if I go to the right side of the ring, and I fill this with uh, maybe a pale yellow like this. And then I go to my shape effects and I add a glow shape effect, maybe one like this. You can see here, you see the outer edge of this. This would normally have been covered up by the left hand side of the ring. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. If I take the left side of the ring, Freeform 7, and I drag it on top of the, the right side of the ring, you see how it covers up that glow right there? I don't want that to happen. So I'll take Freeform 7, put it under Freeform 5, and now I have a perfect gold ring with a gold glow around it, and I do still have the left side of the ring. Now the reason that's important is because in just a second here we're going to add animation, and the animation needs to know where the top center of this whole thing is so it has a good starting point. And if it doesn't have the left side of the ring, it won't start in the right place. It's really frustrating. Okay, so we got this whole element, it's looking great, but the one thing I need to make sure I do now is create an overlay, because as you can see from the previous example, it's just the outer part of the ring and it looks like it's glowing from behind the black circle. So to do that, let's make a black circle. I'll go up here to insert, grab my shapes drop down menu, grab the circle option. The easiest way to make this work is to find just about the center of the slide and hold both control and shift while I'm clicking and dragging out and that'll allow me to drag a perfect circle from the middle of the ring out as much as possible and there we go. And now I can just sort of make sure that it's perfectly aligned. You see there that that gridding helps me out there and I can fill it with black and put no outline around the outside edge. That's pretty good. Now, if I wanted a little narrower, I could always grow that circle out, but that's looking pretty good for me right now. And let's take a second here, insert a text box so that we can put our 57%, or excuse me, it was 64% on this one. Now, of course, we want the font color to kind of match with the overall graphics, so I'll pick that yellow. I make it, want to make it a little chunky, so I'll go with a font like Gotham, for example, and make it bigger. Okay, and uh, we can take this percentage and make the percentage font size a bit smaller, so it sort of fits alongside the 64% better. There we go. And we can align this either by eye or, there we go or by the gridding in PowerPoint, um, but with something that's off balance like this with the percentage, sometimes it's a better to be eyeballed than it is to actually be in the dead center. All right, so that's the graphical look of the example we were going for. The last thing to do is to click on group four over here in the selection pane and have this use a wheel animation to come in. So I go to my animations tab at the top of the screen I choose the wheel selection, and as you can see, it grows all the way around just like that. I can make it start on click. I can have it be two seconds or shorter. Shorter is probably better, but I'll leave it at two seconds for our example here. So let's start the presentation from this slide. Shift F5 goes ahead and starts this from this slide. So there's my 64%. And there is my glow starting from the dead center at the top and going all the way around the circle. Just as a point of reference here, the reason I had to leave the black ring on the left hand side of this in place in that group is because if we just animated the gold ring by itself, it wouldn't start properly from the top center the way this one did. And so it would have sort of an off effect. But that's it. That's how I create that glowing dial effect to show us 64%.